Today we'll continue using vector methods to solve problems in geometry. Just because it's a lot of fun. And all of these problems, we can, uh, some of them, I know how to do because I've looked up the solution. Maybe I looked up the solution 20 years ago when I was really into geometry. But I, I don't think I actually was able to solve any of them. And maybe now I know the solution. And then there are some other problems which I remember solving, uh, but I don't remember the solution and I can't reproduce it. But with geometric vectors and the utility of algebra, we're actually able to solve them in completely straightforward fashion. So what you will observe is that you have to do a little bit of algebra. So there's a little bit of work and maybe you would describe some of these problems as labor intensive. But having a labor intensive approach to a problem is so much better than having no idea how to proceed. So we'll start with the fact that two medians in a triangle, uh, the point of intersection divides the median into two segments in proportion two to one. Okay, this is the point where they intersect. And the statement is that the ratio of the length of this segment to this one is two. This is two to one. And here it's the same thing, two to one. So let me show you the geometric proof just to get it out of the way because I think this is the one problem, maybe one of two, where I actually know how to do it geometrically. So the way you do it is with an additional construction. Once you do the construction, maybe it becomes a little bit easier to see, but it's coming up with the additional construction that takes so much ingenuity. And the thing is, I can't really expect anyone to, to be able to do it. But what you do is, you take this, this point, point and you draw a line that's parallel to this median. And it will land right here. It's the midpoint theorem. If you direct your attention to this triangle that consists of this median, this side, and half of this side, because it starts in the center of this side and is parallel to the base, well then it divides this side into two equal segments, right? So each one of these is half of the half. And now you have to direct your attention to this triangle, which has a line parallel to the base inside, right? This triangle right here. Okay, this line by construction is parallel to its base. This segment now became its base, right? So uh, the proportion of the ratio of the length of this side, I'm going to say this and this, so you have to pay attention. This divided by this, which is the ratio we're looking for, equals this divided by this, which of course is two to one because this is half the side and this is half of the half. So this divided by this equals this divided by this, similar triangles, we've used this argument many times before, so it's two to one. Simple enough, I never would have come up with it. In fact, I don't think anyone ever came up with it this way. No one has ever said, you know what, an ancient Greek, I'm going to prove that this point divides the median in proportion two to one. And to prove that, I'm going to do this. No one says that. The way it happened historically, I'm sure of it, is that uh, people were exploring what happens and drawing all sorts of things, ended up with a picture like this, and then said, wait a minute, ha, I realize now that this is two to one, right? That's how most discoveries happen. You're solving something else, but you're doing it in a very disciplined, diligent, systematic, creative way where you're just exploring everything there is to explore. And then it's your sense of taste that makes it click in your mind that, oh, I just made a discovery, right? I think the biggest accomplishment there is to notice that, right, perhaps you would notice this fact, but is it a discovery? It's knowing that you've stumbled upon the discovery that's training and talent and all of that taste. Uh, my favorite word is taste. Uh, to be good at anything, you have to have taste. That's what you need, a, an aesthetic sense. 
uh, yeah, so that's how it happened. We don't need any additional construction. We just need to start translating into vector algebra the statement of the problem and then calculating. So I need to now impose a vector framework upon this geometric problem, right? It starts with geometry and it needs to end with geometry. And in the middle, we'll, we'll take a detour into algebra. I will call this vector A and this vector B. And then this one right here is half B. This vector is half A. Now let's try to algebraically get a hold of this point. How do we get to this point? Well, we can get to this point in two different ways. Uh, we're thinking of this as the origin. We can go from the origin to A, and then a certain distance along this vector. So this vector right here is B over 2 minus A. That's my favorite vector operation still, subtracting one vector from the other, because you just connect the tips. It's the easiest thing to do. And again, I always say this, you grow up loving sums, and then when you become a little bit more experienced as a mathematician, you really begin to like differences over sums. So I used to love adding vectors tip to tail, parallelogram rules, so nice. Uh, but now I'm a big fan of subtraction. Anyway, that's what this vector is. So to get to this point, we have to go as along this direction a certain amount. We don't know what, the, what that amount is. It's unknown, so we'll call it gamma. So gamma is the fraction of this segment. We're hoping to prove that gamma is two-thirds, right? That would mean that this is one-third, so it's two in proportion two to one. Okay, so that's one way to get there. So I'll write it down. It's, what did we say? You go to A, and then a certain proportion, gamma, along the vector B over two minus A. That's correct. Now there's another way to get to the same point that will give us an equation. So another way to get there is uh, analogously through B. I can go to B, so from the origin go to B, and then a certain amount delta of the segment A over two minus B. That's this vector right here. And that would also land me at the same point, so the two paths are equal. Let me write it down. But what I've captured here is everything that's given in algebraic terms. So what are the two things that are given? That these two lines are medians, and I captured that by saying this is B over 2 and this is A over 2, and that, and that they intersect. What does it mean that they intersect? That means they have a common point. That's where the equal sign comes from. This is intersection, means we arrive at the same point, right? And so we can arrive at that point in two different ways. First, go to A, and then a certain amount along this direction. This direction is B over 2 minus A. Or we can go to B, and then a certain fraction of A over 2 minus B which is exactly what I have written down. And the two are equal because they both meet at this point, both paths. Now this becomes a linear algebra exercise because I love saying these terms, A and B are linearly independent. And here we will have a linear combination of A and B once we collect all the like terms that equals zero. And if a linear combination of two linearly independent vectors equals zero, it must be the trivial linear combination, which means h coefficient is zero. Make sense? Okay, so let's collect like terms. All right, so we have a linear combination that equals zero, and it's a linear combination of linearly independent vectors a and b, so each coefficient might be zero, so I'm just going to turn them straight into equations. And it's clear, we, you can go on and solve this system of equations, but I think it's clear that two-thirds, two-thirds is a solution, right? And because the solution would necessarily be unique, I see the determinant of this system being one minus a quarter, not zero, so it's 
Uh, the equations are independent. The solution would be unique. And I hope you don't mind my taking the shortcut and saying that. Uh, so this wasn't actually too terrible in terms of how much work we did. And we got the answer. So this is 2 thirds. Therefore, this is the remaining part, 1 third. Uh, so proportion 2 to 1. QED. I've always wanted to say that.